Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing today? Happy Saturday. It is currently 4.50 p.m. And I need to start getting ready about, what time do I need to start getting ready? Well, probably about 5.30. So I've got about 40 minutes to vlog. <laughs> because I guess dinner is at 6.30 instead of 7. He thought it was at 7. And then she told him today that dinner is at 6.30. So we need to leave here at about 6. Which I'm really excited about this dinner. But honestly, I do not feel great today. I'm not really sure what's going on. Um, it's not like... I feel like I'm getting cold or, or I'm getting a cold or I'm getting sick or anything like that. I just don't, I don't feel great. Um, I slept super, super deep last night and um, I woke up several times and was having like w one dream I woke up and it was like this most amazing dream and I woke up and it was like so deep and I was just like laying there and I was like, oh my God, I like thinking about all these things that happened in this dream. And then I had a nightmare and I woke up and I was completely sweaty and I just like really slept deep last night. And so when I woke up today, I know it's going to kind of sound, kind of sound crazy, but I just felt drained today when I woke up. And, um, so yeah, so I've just kind of felt drained all day today. And, um, Alex went to his friend's house. So our friend, she just had a baby, I think like two. Two, it was like right after Christmas, so, um, what is it, March, <laughs> beginning of March now, so like just, you know, two months ago, something like that, so he went over there to see her today, and um, she's the one, or they're the couple that we were supposed to go to the Christmas dinner with and exchange Christmas presents, she's the one that I got the, uh, the Reese Witherspoon, the Reese's Book Club bag for, and then um, on Reese's Book Club, so they also have a son, and I think he's four, and so... She loves to read. She's like an avid reader. And so they, on Reese's website, she also has recommendations for like children's books. And so I bought, and she loves to read to her son. And so I bought this children's book too. And I can't remember what it was called. It was called something like The Road Knows or something like that. And it was about like the roads you take in life. And it was a book that my mom would have loved, like as a children's book. And it was all about this road and the road speaking to this person. Um... It was kind of a little deep, honestly. Like, I read the whole thing. It was kind of a little deep for a kid. But I thought she would love it, because she's somebody that loves stuff like that. And we read a lot of the same books. So, he took her to the bag today, and they hung out for a little bit. And um, then he came home after that, and he has been... Um, how are you? He's been um, napping ever since. That was like a... Like a single dad or something like walking down the street and um he was like pushing his baby down the street but he looked young well not like young young but he looked like like 25 20 25 30 or something i feel like that's like kind of young for a single dad walking down the street i've never seen this guy before in our neighborhood before but he was real real friendly he had his airpods on and he like smiled and waved at me um so anyway so yeah i have just not felt great today and then we're going to our friend's birthday dinner tonight and we're going to this steakhouse in Fishers which is called 1933 and I love this place um I just uh, I wish I felt better to go I already kind of have it figured out like what I want to get and stuff like that whenever I go to a steakhouse it's kind of hard for me which is interesting because um I was like what do I have in this pocket I have reading glasses in this pocket and I have reading glasses over here I always have like all these pairs of reading glasses everywhere. Um, but whenever we go to like a friend's birthday or something like that, they typically pick like a steakhouse, which is interesting. And um, like Melissa and Jason, like they like to go to steakhouses. And so this friend that we're going to, it's her birthday. And um, so she picked the steakhouse and it'll be like, it'll be like her family, like her siblings, and then her cousins that she's really close to, and her husband, and stuff like that. And I love, I mean, I've known that, so this friend of, it's really a friend of Alex's that he used to work with, but she actually used to work with my ex. And so I met her probably like five years before Alex and I were together. And then when I started dating Alex, she was working with Alex. And so then she and her first husband, who she wasn't married to at that time, they were just dating. It was like four of us couples used to hang out, five of us couples. We used to go to 
this place in Noblesville on Wednesday night. So it was called Moe's. And one of our friends, her husband, um, used to host, like, karaoke there. This guy ended up, like, auditioning. He almost made it to, like, the final round. Not the final round, like, on the show, but, like, the final round of being on the show of American Idol. He's, like, a fantastic singer. But anyway, really neat guy. So it was, like, four or five of us couples that when Alex and I first start, started to date that we, like, all hung out and we would go out to dinner together and whatever. So anyway, her, she and her husband, I, I don't know, they got divorced. They were married, like, two years and got divorced and, um... She got remarried, and now they've been married. If Alex and I have been married like 12 years, they've probably been married 10 years. And um, they have a little girl and stuff like that. So anyway, um, so it's her birthday. And so I think her birthday is next weekend. So we're going out to dinner um, tonight for her birthday. Last year, we went to her surprise birthday. And um, so her brother's like a real, like, famous, like, chef here in Indianapolis and starts, like, up a lot of, like, really unique restaurants. Like, he did this restaurant that was, like, listed, like, one of the top, like, restaurants in Bon Appetit magazine in the country. And it was from Indianapolis and it was his restaurant that he started. And so he hosted this dinner, um, I think it was last year for a surprise birthday party for her. And he, like, made all the food and it was really cool and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, so we're doing this tonight at the Steakhouse. I, I, this is some place that, like, Alex goes a lot. Um, for, like, drinks with his girlfriends and stuff like that. I think that's kind of why she picked it. It's kind of like a social setting. And um, so I already, like, know some of the things there that I like. They have, like, really, really good mashed potatoes. And they have this one thing. I don't know if it's in season because sometimes their menu, like, rotates out of season. But they have, like, this sweet potato casserole that has, like, pecans in it and stuff. I'm not super, super hungry, so I don't think I'm going to get a lot. I'm kind of like, the mashed potatoes there are great, but I'm like, I don't even know if I'm that hungry. I might just get, to be honest with you, since I'm not really that hungry, I might just get, like, a side wedge with no bacon, which is usually what I do when I go to a steakhouse. So, yeah, but, like, I just, I, I felt drained all day today, and, um... I'm not really sure what it is. I had a bunch of videos that I wanted to film today. I had a video that I was going to do like a Q&A on my drama channel because um, I hadn't done one for a while. And so yesterday I had, was like two days ago, I put on my Instagram story. I had said like, what do you guys want me to cover for like drama topics or whatever? And it was interesting because like every question that I got was like, what's your favorite movie? Who do you like on The Real Housewives of Atlanta? Like, what do you think of it? I mean, it was all just like questions. It was like a Q&A. And so last night I put out just like this question box on my Instagram and I put anything. And so then I got a bunch of questions just about like random stuff. Here, I should like just read off to you. Some of them are kind of funny. I mean, like I always get like, what's your favorite color? Or things like that. But they're funny, the questions that I get. So... Where is it at? So here's the first one that I put up. Oh, that here's the second. That was the second one. Okay, the first one has expired already, but I screenshot all the questions and answers. So I put on here, ask me or anything, and then it's a question box. And so I got. Oh wait, now I'm on the picture. Put all these pictures of animals. So like, let's see some of the questions. Biggest pet peeve. <laughs> Do you like cats? I, like, when I get comments like that, I think it's so funny because I think people know that I cannot stand cats. Well, I don't really... It's not that I can't stand cats. I've never had a cat. I didn't grow up with cats. I'm allergic to cats. Not as bad as Alex. Like, Alex is, like, deathly allergic to cats. And, um... And so, I just don't like cats. Plus, like, most of the cats that I've been around... I, 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 like, I think kittens are really, really cute. I like kittens. Um... But if I, like, hold a kitten long enough, I start sneezing and getting, like, really itchy and allergy-ish, you know? Um, with, like, cats, like, there's only been, like, one or two people in my entire life that I've known that have a cat that I think is super friendly and whatever. Like, I just don't think that cats are super friendly. But I, I have to tell you, I have so many friends of mine that are, like, diehard cat people that, like, love cats. It seems like most of my friends, Melissa and Jason, they have dogs and they have cats. Um, they're, like, really... Well, Caroline's had dogs and cats. Oh, my God, Caroline had this cat. I swear to God, this cat was, like, 32 years old when she passed. Her name was Gail. She was a rescue cat. And she would just sit on the bottom step of Caroline's stairs. And she would just, like, when you would walk by, you'd go, like, hi, Gail. And she'd go, meh. And she was, like, the most pathetic little old cat. I mean, I feel like she was, like, elderly, like, her entire life. Caroline, I think, rescued her when she was, like, elderly or something. I don't know why I always cracked up that her name was Gail. I don't think, I just thought that was the funniest name for a cat. Caroline actually had a cat 
and it was black and it had white paws. Do you guys remember from Saturday Night Live that Toonsis, Toonsis the driving cat, Caroline had a cat and she named it Toonsis. I always thought that was so funny. Um, somebody asked me, how did you deal with the loss of your mother? I feel like I've dedicated like 922 videos to, them, to talking about that. But I think, it, you know, I'll answer the question. What's your favorite ice cream? My favorite ice cream of life has been Jerry's Chubby Hubby. Um, I haven't had it in forever. So he asked me, do you pee in pools? <laughs> and they go on to describe, I personally don't, but apparently a lot of people do. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so a lot of these people are asking me, people ask multiple questions on here, which I think is so funny. Did you get a new icon hat? I have not gotten a new icon hat. This is my old, well this is, so I lost the one when I was going to LA. Um, that was corduroy and then I found it online and bought another one and I think it was in between there that I bought The blue cotton one that looks almost identical to this. She can't even really tell a difference on camera Except for if I get real close you can tell this one's corduroy and then I have a denim one I have a couple icon hats, but this is really the only one that I, I usually wear unless I walk I sometimes wear the cotton one because I'm trying to kind of break it in a little bit um Will you cover the missing and murdered children of Atlanta on your new true crime segments? Yeah, I plan to do that. Speaking of which, a lot of people were like, I miss the true crime, I miss the true crime and stuff like that. I was just kind of um, on my drama channel, just trying to kind of get an idea of how I wanted to do the true crime and stuff like that. And I actually said in one of the first videos, I said that I probably would start it in April. Um, because, and like, we'll like dedicate it in April, like doing like one or two videos a week on my drama channel. Probably I'll start with like one, so I'll probably do like four a month. Um, but that's actually one of the documentaries that I have not seen that, um, people have said is really good that I want to see, which is the Missing and Murdered Children of Atlanta. Um, I'm, right now I'm watching, what do you call it, uh, the Murder Under the Friday Night Lights. I feel like I've talked about it for like the last three nights. Last night I watched like three episodes of it. Um, and it's interesting because a lot of them are about um, like football players that get shot like and going out to clubs and stuff like that. It's interesting because I'm kind of wondering like if, if in a future segment one of Alex's friends, this guy was so nice, this guy here in Indianapolis, I don't know if you ever heard about this story, but Alex's friend Chris, he um, was downtown, I feel like it was like during Circle City weekend or something like that, but he had played football for, um, he was a good, like, great football player, I think he played for IU too, and he was a football coach, like on the side of what he did, he, I think he was a football coach for one of the private schools here, I think it was Cathedral or something like that, but anyway, he, some, I can't remember exactly how it happened, but Alex was real close with him. Um, he lived downtown, and um, it was during, like, a bunch of crazy stuff was happening downtown. And he, like, somebody was, like, banging on the door of the apartment. Like, like people were, like, scared and whatever. And so, like, he ran down and, like, tried to help these people get in or something. I can't remember exactly how it happened. But anyway, he got shot, and he died. And um, I, just about six months ago... Because um, one of my friends, she like went to the trial and followed it closely. So she was posting stuff online. I saw that the three people, I think it was like a, a man and two women, um, were convicted with killing him. But it was like just, it was like a horrible, horrible thing that happened here in Indianapolis. Like people like adored this guy. He was such a good guy. He was like such a good part of the community and stuff like that. And they like did this whole. I, I can't remember how. Well, I think this. I think the sentencing happened like six months ago. But this happened several years ago, because I can remember, I even talked about it in a vlog. Alex went downtown, and they had, like, painted this whole, like, city block, like, this mural and dedication to him. And um, his name was Chris Beatty. He was, like, a really nice guy. And they did, like, this whole mural downtown, and, like, Alex went to, like, the dedication of it and stuff like that. It's really, really sad. Um, but, like, that's kind of the theme of a lot of these episodes, is, like, somebody that was like a big part of the community, but part of how they got there was like through their football career or coaching football and things like that. I was thinking about him last night while I was watching it. They're tragically sad. One I watched last night, some of them are like really, really like from like way back in the day. Like they kind of like this one last night that I was watching reminded me a little bit of the movie Halloween, which would have come out like just like five years before it happened. And it was about this cheerleader and her name was Amy Hoffman. And she was a cheerleader, and it was Thanksgiving weekend. This was in New Jersey, and she was working at a mall, 
like a clothing store, they said. They mostly did, shared the story through the interviews of like her friends that were cheerleaders. And she went missing, and then they ended up finding her body in this like retention tank. And this other girl, she got stabbed to death. The, the story was so bizarre, and it was so sad. And so um, I watched that one last night, and then I watched one more. And that was about a guy that was a Denver Broncos. I was kind of surprised I had never heard of that story, actually. And they left a club, and it was on New Year's, I think. And they were, like, in this, like, Hummer, like, limo. And these guys, like, shot at him. And it was about this altercation that happened, like, in the bar and stuff like that. It was really sad. That was the last one I watched and I went to bed. Probably why I'm having all these weird dreams and nightmares. Because I'm watching all this true crime and stuff like that, you know? So, anyway. Um, so, yeah, that was what I watched. Alex and I, last night, we watched... The Swans, Truman Capote versus The Swans. We got caught up on that. I um, <clears throat> I thought last, I thought this week's episode would be the last one, and next week is apparently the finale. I like it. I think it's good. It feels very dragged out. They were showing actually <laughs> the the previews for the next part, uh, which is part two of American Horror Story, and it's that same story, that delicate with Emma Roberts and Kim Kardashian. It's so bad, you guys. It is so bad. We watched the whole first part of it, and now they're coming out with the second part of it. I just wish they would just, like, scrap it and come out. American Horror Story used to be so good. Alex goes, I miss American Horror Story, and I go, when it was good? <laughs> he goes, no, when they, like, all the stories tied together. Because back in the day when you would watch them, like, one kind of, like, they would hint at past seasons and what you were watching and things like that. And this one's completely different. This is, like, based on a book. I, this is so bizarre that they even did this one, and it's so bad. Like, I think of Ryan Murphy as kind of a genius when it comes to, like, producing these shows and stuff like that. I'm really surprised that, like, he picked this one. It's really bad. It's not, like... It's very Rosemary's Baby-ish, kind of, but it's just, I feel like it's been done a million times. Honestly, I mean, we wa we've watched half the season, and it's really not that interesting. People were, like, dogging Kim Kardashian in it. I actually thought she was probably one of the better actresses in it. Um, I mean, Emma, no, nobody's bad in it. It's just the story's not interesting. It's just not interesting at all. So, so yeah, so that's coming back out. So we watched... Um, Truman Capote versus the Swans, and then we watched RuPaul's Drag Race. I felt like we watched something else before that, because he got really tired when we were watching RuPaul's Drag Race. We watched RuPaul's Drag Race, and we watched Untucked, and then, um, then he went to bed, and then I stayed up. What did I do? I didn't clean last night. Um, I listened to some of my book, The Firm, Somebody is walking down the street talking about, do you have any, talking about arrowheads. No, but when Brian dropped them off, I took the arrow box with me and I got home. Arrow tips. I'm talking about arrows or something. They were carrying a bunch of stuff down the street like they were going somewhere to like, you know, somebody's house. But like, I've never seen those people in this neighborhood before either. We know like, they like put out in the, like this newsletter and stuff like every time somebody new moves in the neighborhood and they don't like nobody moves out and moves in i think there's only been like one or two that have like moved out or moved in in the last six months or a year so all these new people that come in and around here they're from like neighboring neighborhoods what did i watch last night before i i didn't watch the bachelor last night what did i watch Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, okay, Bachelor, Bachelor, The Swans, Survivor, I'd already watch. What did I watch? Because we didn't get started that way, and I didn't take a walk last night, because it was raining and stuff outside, and I was just, like, really cold, and I was like, no, I don't think I'm going to walk tonight. Um, I wonder if that's kind of why I feel like I'm dragging today a little bit, because I've been walking so much lately. What did I watch? I didn't lay down. That is so bizarre. I don't know. But I can't think about I can't think of it. I will say it's kind of like weird to me that it's coming over me that um um that it's the Oscars tomorrow and like there was this big like 
or something we were watching, there was like this big commercial for, who was talking about the Oscars? What was I watching? And they were like, the Oscars every year, and oh, it was on Truman Capote versus the, the uh, Swans. They were talking about this babe that's a character. I don't want to ruin it for anybody of what happens, but she she has like this dream sequence and she's got this dress and she's like, did, when did I wear this dress? And he's like, you didn't, babe. He was like, the guy that plays Truman Capote, Tony and I were talking about that. Like, she, he is fantastic. Like, I mean, you cannot tell the difference between him and Truman Capote. Like, it's bizarre. And, um, and he's like, you didn't, babe. Don't you remember? Like, we stayed in and we watched the Oscars and you wore the dress. And I don't know why that kind of reminded me of, like, watching the Oscars back in the day with my mom and stuff like that. So I was thinking about that last night. I will, I'll probably watch the Oscars tomorrow. Like, I'll probably start watching them. The thing is, I don't know any of the movies that are up, like I said, except for The Holdovers and Barbie. And Bar Barbie's nominated for very few. Um... I'm just not that interested. I, oh, I talked on the phone for a while last night to a couple different people. I forgot about that. Um... I'm just not that interested in this year, the Oscars. Um, who's the host of it? Jimmy Kimmel or somebody like that? Like, I feel like the Oscars are just not what they used to be. I don't know. So, yeah. Oh, so I was talking about Alex going over there. So, uh, the reason I brought that up was because... So, that was um, what I got her for Christmas. And then... My wrapped present is sitting on the dining room table. <laughs> she calls me pumpkin. It says two pumpkin. Um, but I haven't opened it yet, so I don't know what she got me. And I'm trying to kind of figure out what I want to wear tonight. I want to wear something that's kind of cute, but kind of casual. Nobody that will be at this dinner will be, like, super dressed up. They'll all be, like, jeans and, like, button-out collared shirts. It'll be, like, very much that. It won't be, um... It'll be, like, all, like, kind of, like... Like, do we say business casual anymore? <laughs> It'll be all very kind of business casual. And it won't go late. So dinner's at 6.30, so we'll probably be home no later than 8.30 or 9. I mean, this will not be a late night at all. And, um... So, yeah. Which is good. Because I'm kind of just, like, wanting to feel like just, like, hanging around the house, which is what I always do. It's weird. I was saying this yesterday, like... Um, since there wasn't Cousin Fun Day today. So Caroline and her husband and her son and his girlfriend have been in Florida for the last week. And they um, are getting back today. They're probably flying in as we speak. Um, so they're getting in today. And um, they've been gone for the last week, which is why we didn't do Cousin Fun Day this week. And, um, but I've talked to her a couple times. They're having a blast. So my aunt and uncle, like, had, like, a timeshare place in Florida that they went to for, like, 30 years or something like that. And so Caroline and Mike still have it. And so they go down there once a week. Well, actually, they have, like, two units. And so I don't really know how it works, honestly. And so this two people, this couple that were, like, my aunt and uncle's best friends, they go down there at the same time that Caroline and Mike and David and his girlfriend are down there. So they all go out to dinner, like, every night together. Caroline has, like, I mean, she's very structured, you know? So Caroline has, like, reservations for, like, every night for all of them to go out to dinner, like, all six of them to go out to dinner and stuff like that. And she loves it. I was, like, asking her before we, or she left. I was, like, so now, like, what do you guys do, like, to go to the beach every day? She's, like, we get up and we have our favorite places for breakfast. And so she was, like, we go to breakfast at, like, 9 o'clock. And, and then, um, so... Because I was asked, oh, because Caroline and, um, we wanted all of them to come for, like, Alex's birthday, depending on where we end up going, whether we're not sure yet, but it's going to be, like, probably Mexico or something like that. And Caroline was looking the dates, and she's already, like, they get a house in Michigan every summer. Caroline's done that since she was, like, little, like, with her parents, and so they still do that, like, every summer. And it's during that same week, so she can't go. Um... So we were talking about, like, how we, like, you know, traveling and all that kind of stuff. And so she was like, we get up for breakfast, and then there's, like, this big fat bird just, like, sitting. Like, do you remember, like, in the song Partridge in a Pear Tree? It's like, that's what it looks like. It's like this fat bird and just, like, sitting in this barren tree. But anyway, so she's like, we get up for breakfast, and then we come back, and we're back to the, you know, the house by, like, 11 o'clock. And then she's like, then we go to the beach. And she's like, Mike sometimes won't, you know, he doesn't want to go to the beach, or he doesn't like to go to the beach, or whatever. So she's like, you know, I'll go to the beach, and, you know whatever, and she's like, we are there, like, they're at the beach for, like, an hour and a half, two hours, <laughs> and she's like, or we'll go shopping in town, Mike and I will go shopping in town, or walk around, and she was like, and then we come back, and she was like, you know, we rest for a little bit, and she's like, then we go to dinner, and I'm like, what time do you guys go to dinner? Like, this, Caroline is, like, I was talking about this the other day with, like, I can't remember if I was talking about this on a vlog, or if I was talking to somebody, because I was laughing, talking about Caroline, 
like when we're, I was talking about to Tanya about it. Cause like when we go to like Mexico and stuff, like when we're coming off the beach, like we're always like the last two or three couples off the beach. When we're coming off the beach, it's like 4.30 to 5.30. And there's like couples that are like literally dressed like in like dresses for dinner, like going to dinner, right? At like 4.30. And I always like cracks me up. I'm like, oh my God, what time are you guys going to bed? Like seven, which I know there's a lot of people. I have like friends of mine that like they're in bed on vacation at like seven or eight, you know? Like Tanya always gets up early for breakfast, but then she'll like walk and then come back and like sleep and then go to the beach and whatever, right? And so I said to Caroline something about, because I know she, go, she goes to dinner always, like, very early. And she's like, oh, well, we go to dinner between, like, 4.30 and 5. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> she's like, what? She's like, what time do you guys go to dinner? She's like, I'm always, like, latest reservation possible, like, 9 o'clock. <laughs> Which people, you would think there's, like, nobody that does that. But whenever we go to, like, on a, like somewhere and we go to a resort and we go out to dinner, we always, like, call and get, like, last reservation. But whether we're in Las Vegas or Miami or whatever, it's always last reservation. And you would think that it wouldn't be, like... Any, there's always, like, other people standing in line. Like, it's always busy, like, right up until the very end, you know? But I have, listen, I have to get my nap in every day. So, anyway, Caroline's coming home today. I missed her. I can't wait to see her. She was, like, emailing me this stuff. She was, like, read my email that I sent you. She sent me this email, and she's, like, I can't wait to get your opinion on this next week. <laughs> it's this funny thing. So, anyway, um, so, yeah, I miss Caroline. I can't wait to see her. But, anyway, I'm glad that she had a good vacation. You know that she's the queen of vacations. She loves her vacations, right? What time is that? I have to make sure that I get ready. It's 5.16 that I can um, get ready in time. So, yeah, so we'll come home tonight after this. And then I don't think we have, we don't have any shows to watch. I still need to catch up on Bachelor Nation. Hometowns was this week. I still need to watch that one. And what's the other show that I need to watch? I need to finish Life and Bath. I'm just so not into it. Oh, RuPa RuPaul's Drag Race. UK versus the world this week's episode I haven't watched yet. There's a couple movies I want to see. Mean Girls is on Paramount Plus, like the new one. Alex doesn't seem like he has any interest in seeing that, which kind of surprises me. And then there's a couple other movies that I want to see. So we might watch a movie tonight. I don't know. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Um Let's read some comments from the vlog, shall we? Vlog of life. Okay, let's go into the comments. Comments. Boop, 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 boo. Okay. Do, 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 do. Let me look through these comments a little bit. Okay. I'm gonna go to the newest ones first. Oh, one hour ago. Tia! Hey, Tia girl! How are you doing? Okay. Um, The way you talk about your mom truly has inspired me. Aww. Aww, you're so sweet. So, Tia was talking about how when I was talking about my mom yesterday and, like, getting healthy and whatever, like, inspired her. I, you know, like... First of all, the comment that I got when somebody said, like, how I view my mother or how I talk about her, like, okay, I, so, I have a couple friends of mine that I understand why they do it. Like, it makes sense to me um, that, like, in all, I mean, and this is not just, I'm, like, p putting this on so I can, hold on a second. I'm putting the display brightness on never so that the phone will just like stay on so I can read comments. So here's the thing, like I understand why people do it. I've known people my entire life that do it, right? But like I've had so many people in my life that have had like absolutely toxic relationships with their parents or something like that, right? Like they'll be like, I cannot stand my mother. My mother drives me crazy. Like, oh my God, I never want to talk to her again, right? And, you know, like, and they'll say that to me and they'll vent and whatever. I mean, I've had so many people in my life like that. Like, I can't stand my mother. My mother and I have never gotten along. And then their mother passes away. And then they're like, oh, my God, my mother was the most beautiful person in the entire world. I loved my mother so much. Like, she was so good. Like, she was such a pure spirit. I'm like, um, last week, like, okay, let's, like, let's have a real conversation about it, right? Like, okay, maybe, like, you feel guilty because you never resolve things with your mom. I don't know, you know? Like, okay. But, like, it's, I, I never say anything, right? I'm just like, oh, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, wonderful memories of your mom. It's always interesting to me, though, when people have such strong feelings about people when they're alive, but then they saint them. And I mean, this is just truth-telling, okay? This is how I'm, I would say this to any of my friends. I'm saying it to you because y'all are my friends. Um, but that's how I feel about it, right? Like, um... 
it's interesting to me that, like, we say people, like, you have such strong... The camera stopped. I can't believe I'm at the 30-minute mark. You have such feelings, strong feelings of opposition, and then as soon as a person passes away, it's like they're sainted, right? Well, I was very aware that for me to health, be in a healthy place of grieving, I had to be honest with my feelings about how I felt about my mom. That meant that I couldn't just forget everything that happened you know, in my childhood and growing up and strong feelings that I had about my mom. My mom and I got along great when she passed away, you know, but the, she was still difficult at times. She was a hard person. My mom was a hard person. Anybody would say that. I loved her, you know. I think some of those things that made her difficult and made her hard were what contributed to her her being character, characteristically unique and stuff like that, right? Like, she might not have been that person had she not had those issues. But she was still difficult. My mom was still a difficult person. I don't choose to just glaze over all of that. I, the comment that was left was so nice because it was like, amidst all of the pain that you went through as a result of your mother, you still have this view of her. Well, of course I do, right? But my mom, like I said in the video yesterday, would want me to tell the whole story. She wouldn't want me to just to be like, oh, my mother was this fantastic. She wouldn't want that, right? Because to do that glazes over all the issues that my mom worked through, right? Like, it, it takes away all the work that she did for us to have the relationship that we had. And to me, that's more powerful than me just to forget all that and be like, oh, no, she was this beautiful person. I think it shows more to say she overcame all this. You know, my mom prided herself on being able the last, you know, 12 to 13 years of her life that she was sober to be the mother that she had always wanted to be. And like I said, even when she was drinking, like there were times that she was just, my, my childhood was magical. Much of it, most of it was, you know? But I think that there's those standout moments that we choose to remember, you know, that become significant in our lives and things like that. Um, so, yeah, but I just want to say I really appreciate the comment that you, wh whoever originally left the comment and saying thank you for seeing it this way because that meant a lot to me. Um, okay. Um, somebody commenting about James Charles. Somebody said, JoJo said, when you take a day or two off, I enjoy watching your older vlogs. Aw, thank you. Somebody said, over 2,000 vlogs is crazy. Wow, I didn't re realize it's been seven years. I missed a couple years, but I'm glad to be back. Aw, thank well, thank you for coming back. Um... Somebody said, my ex used to judge me because I worked at how many acted as if I didn't have a job. So freaking rude because obviously I pay my bills. I work, wouldn't worry about what people think. They are just jealous and miserable. Um, you know, it's interesting to me. Um, well, I think we live in a different world today because after lockdown, I think so many people work from home, right? Like, I think it's just changed the entire way that you look at home. Alex has, interestingly enough, never been that way. Like, Alex has always been somebody that's always stood up for me and been like, if you see P Peter, like, at home, like, he's... I don't know what people imagine, but, like, it's Peter's... He's, like, very structured. Like, he has this list of videos he's going to make, and he's, like... It, it, like, be, Alex will be like... Like, Peter's, like, when he's watching these videos and he's taking notes, like, it's, like, don't interrupt kind of thing, right? I didn't really even realize it, because Alex had always said those things to people. Um, but, like, when... The first time I went to Arizona with Mel... I don't know if I said this last night or not. Like, Mel was so surprised. She That kind of surprised me. Mel was like, I don't think I really ever got it. Like, how much work goes on behind the scenes until I was with you, like, every day, right? Like, that was the first time that I went to go visit Mel. That kind of surprised me. That doesn't really bother me if people think that, like... I don't know what I said in this video yesterday, but I got quite a few comments from people talking about me focusing on negativity and things like that. But I want to, I'll, I'll get to that in just a second, okay? So, um, somebody said, maybe you could donate the yearbooks to the school the yearbook is from. <coughs> which I think is a fantastic, um, which is just a fantastic suggestion. Unfortunately, the high school that my mom went to no longer exists. They tore it down. I don't know where those yearbooks would go. Um... So, yeah, but I thought that was a great recommendation. Um, my mom's recovery coins, I have given many of them to women in the program because my mom would want that. She wouldn't want them to just sit in a bag. Um, and also, I have a lot of my mom's pie fi stuff, which I've given away some of it to people that became pie fies. Um, but she would want that as well. My mom was definitely somebody that would want the legacy to continue with whatever she was involved in. I thought that was a fantastic recommendation, not just for me, but for anybody out there to donate the yearbooks to the high school. I thought that was a great, because honestly, like, 
that had kind of gone through my mind and I kind of thought, well, that's kind of silly, you know, whatever, like, to donate some of these things for the years. Well, I thought that was a great recommendation. Um, Julie said, sounds like you're doing a great job on the basement. I, I feel like I need validation. I've, like, worked my ass off on that basement. Like, I'm really busting my butt. Um, and I still, like, look around and I'm like, oh, my God, there's, like, so much, right? But, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a little bit by a little bit um, each day. Um, Catherine said, oh, Peter, ignore the haters. We love you. Well, I do. She said, oh, thank you, Catherine. I love you, too. Um, somebody said, none of this is true. It was so good. I can't wait for more recommendations like that. Thanks for mentioning it. Well, thank you. Well, Stacy mentioned it, and then Nikki got the book. But, yeah. And somebody actually recommended another Lisa Jewell book in here. Um, she was gone or something like that. Sharon said, I still have my first two stuffed animals, Bobby and Teddy. Oh, I love that so much. Um, Amazing Andy said, didn't you just put out a series of videos outlining how you had a revelation about not caring what people say, yet you're still dedicating time to address addressing your haters? No, actually, I didn't put out a series. I put out one video. Um, it was on my Peter Mon channel, which I think you should know because you watch a lot of my videos. Um, the video was called I've Reached My Breaking Point. It wasn't a series. It was one video. And I actually said in that video that I'll probably continue to talk about it from time to time because I'm like, it's a, it's an onward journey and things like that. Um, so yeah, it's a struggle, you know, it's a struggle when people say things, but, um, I wanted to address this one comment down here. Um, where is it at? Um, somebody said, your vlogs are enjoyable. Honestly, when you focus on some negative rest comment, we all lose out on great Peter vlog material. And I want to say, I really appreciate that comment. Um, so, and then there was a follow-up comment and the comment was, it says, or it feels like we're the ones getting yelled at and we didn't do nothing. So, oh, why did this go into picture mode? So, I want to say, I really appreciate all those comments about it, and there were, I wouldn't say tons, but there were a couple comments, so people were like, I'm sorry that you're, like, you know, getting negativity or whatever, and people are saying this stuff. So, let me be really, um, let me be real forthright with you, okay? So, I kind of didn't really know what to do about it. The rest comment, what was interesting to me about this was, so, I mentioned in my video about the rest comment, and then the person, like, doubled down and left a comment, right? And then in that comment that they doubled down when they made a dig, okay? This is what some people do out there. So I'll make this real clear. Um, so when the people that, um, they don't really like me, but for some reason they can't stop watching me, which is what I call hate watching, okay? And, I, and listen... I know that a lot of people out there love watching my videos and they feel like uh, the last comment that the person left that I just commented on, that was a very genuine comment. I know that it was, okay? What it said that you, it feels like I'm taking time away from you. That is a very genuine comment. I just want to say I really, really appreciate that. Um, hold on just a second. Where you said your vlogs are enjoyable. Honestly, when you focus on some negative rest comment, we all lose out on great pre... I, I appreciate that comment. So, I'm going to address this this last time, and then, hopefully, going forward, I don't address it again. Okay. So, I got this comment. There were two comments that I got. The comment was about triggering, okay? When you look up things about tr trigger warnings and whatever online, it's uh, applying that to mental health, okay? And that... Um, people put trigger warnings and things because it is triggering to people's traumatic experiences. It's triggering to people's um, mental health issues, okay? I take the word trigger warning, triggering very, very seriously, all right? When I talked about that in a the video, there were a lot of people that commented on it and they said, you know, that word is overplayed in society. I completely agree with that, all right? I completely agree with the fact that that word is overused, just like I feel like the word bullying is overused and so it's diminished, all right? Um, that being said, as a person that makes videos on YouTube, when I'm often asked to include trigger warnings and things about very serious topics I talk about, right? When I'm talking about things, and I even said in that video, I said I can understand why like me talking about food issues or whatever is triggering to people that have food issues. Like I understand that, right? It's not gonna stop me from talking about it, but I get it. But to talk about like things that I had 
that I was gonna do, right? Like whether that was take a nap or take a walk and not do it for a day or whatever, like every normal person in the world out there, I wasn't asking for validation, okay? I was asking for this person to trip themselves up. And so when that person doubled down and they said, and this is what they always do, okay? So I just wanna make this clear because this is gonna be the last time I address it. I don't enjoy addressing the negative comments either. And yesterday I almost did. And then I thought, no, just let somebody walk right into it, okay? And so, um, cause there's a couple people that have left some comments. They even left the comments on the videos yesterday that have left comments on threads that have been sent to me and things like that. And listen, okay? The fact that you're not blocked from my channel yet is a mystery. So what I'm just gonna do from now on, you know, is um, like, hold on a second. What was, uh, what was Andy's comment up here? Andy said, Ooh, why can't I get to the comments? Okay. Andy's comment was, didn't you just put out a series of videos outlining how you had a revelation about not caring what people say, yet you still dedicating time to addressing your haters? So from now on, I'll just block the people, okay, that I've seen that have left comments. That have been, People have sent me these things, right? That have left questionable comments on my videos for years and years and years. When you find yourself blocked from my channel, I'm not going to address it anymore. I won't. I don't enjoy address addressing it, okay? I'll just block those people. But I have received, I, I commented about the triggering thing, right? Well, what was interesting was that I think on that same video I had said something about somebody saying that I rest too much. So then somebody doubled down and they left this comment and their comment was, okay, and this is where it's tricky, is that people, because they know that a lot of people that watch my vlogs read the comments, okay? And so what they do is then they try to coerce the conversation in the, the, the comment sections. I'm just saying this to prove the lengths that people go to, okay? And then what they say is, like they try to kind of like blame me a little bit like it. And so what this person said was, I'm really, it makes me really sad that you reacted to that triggering comment the way that you did. Basically making it out to be that I'm the person that's in the wrong, okay? But then if you go back and you read their comment, the last thing that they said on their comment was something to the effect of like, and then they tried to make it like they love watching my videos. And then what they said was the very last part of their paragraph that they left was saying something about on the days that you film, except for the days that you take off and rest. Well, when I hit their thing to go see their past comments, what I realized was they were the person that had been leaving several negative comments on my videos. And they were also the person that left the comment that said, you rest more than anybody that I know. So yesterday when I said that in the video, and they were also, because somebody said something to them about, like, this person you, that defended me, I was defending them. They were the one that, that person got snarky back to another person in my comment section and said, smooches. That's why I brought that up in that video yesterday, okay? But I just want to make this clear, because I'm not stupid, all right? But I'm not going to comment on it anymore either. So when I see this stuff, I'll just, this is me explaining to you how you get blocked on my channel, all right? So where was the comment? So... Like, there's a couple people that I've watched for a long time. So this person leaves this comment. Your vlogs are enjoyable. Honestly, when you focus on some negative rest comment, we all lose out on great Peter Mon, or Peter Mon material. I thought that was very nice. Go to look at the comments. The comments are all over the place. They're very positive. They're supportive. Some of them are questioning. Some of them are asking me things. But this is somebody that's watching for a long time. Then there's this comment underneath there that says, or it feels like we're the ones getting yelled at, and we didn't do nothing. So that person now is leading the conversation, right? And that has four likes on it of how... Now, what they're saying is that we feel like. So when you go to this person's comments, what you see is um, they've, they've left two comments on this vlog. They're an, avid vlog. they're an avid vlog watcher, but they've only left two comments and seven years of vlogging. And the two comments that they've left are that one and um, uh, another one that they left on the very same video and said exactly mentioning them at all just betrays the fact that their barbs have hit their mark. Personally, I would make maybe feature, uh, feature a poster of the day where I mentioned someone who had made me laugh or encouraged me or educated me or touched my heart, etc. and never refer to haters again. Well, that's okay, so I won't. And uh, I won't... Uh, I mean, you've left two comments on my channel and uh, both of your comments are... The only two comments you've ever left on my channel at all. So are very, it's very interesting to me. I think I focus on a daily basis talking about Stacy recommending this book to me, Sharon sending me stuffed animals. I read a lot of positive comments on here. I talk about Tia messaging me and sending me really nice things. Um, but this is, you know, my life and this is my vlog. And I just wanted to explain to you that 
Yesterday's vlog was a bit, little bit of me like, um, let's see who comes out and has something to say about this. Because it's interesting to me that there are some people that only come out when I do mention something negative. And you did. And I just want to say I appreciate that. Because there are, have been some people that I've been kind of like wondering for a while, like, are you a faithful or are you a traitor? And what you proved to me was, you're a traitor. So thank you for proving yourself to me, okay? The other thing that I've said, and I've said this before, is like, I don't really know in like people's to tones, like, is it just you don't really know how to talk to somebody in the real world? And you don't, like, you have, like, you struggle with that? Or is it, like, your tone comes across as difficult or whatever? Um, but I'm just going to block people from now on, okay? When I've seen your name come up other places, I won't address the hate anymore. I won't address the negativity. I'll do the best I can. I can tell you, I'm a real person. And I even said in my series of videos, that was one video that I did. Um, I said over there, I'll probably fall back and talk about it. Maybe next week, I hope not. Maybe in four or five days. If you go back and watch the video, that's what I said. I knew in saying that. If I came out in that video and I said I'll never talk about it again, I knew that was a flat out lie because I knew it would take two days and it would deal. It's, it's a lie. It's a lot to deal with when you get it coming from Instagram DMs and Twitter DMs and emails and people are sending you constantly. That's why I said don't send me receipts. Don't. Okay? But some people out there, um, like your name's all over places on threads that you've left comments and I don't know why. You, you think I'm consumed with hate but um, and that I'm making, you know, all these videos about it and whatever, but you're obviously consumed with something because you're not just watching my vlogs. You're taking the time out of your day to go search out threads where people are talking about me that are hating, hating me and spreading negativity, and you're commenting over there. You're setting up whole accounts so that you can comment over there. Who's consumed with who, right? So I'll make y'all a deal, okay? Just so you know, I wanted to see who came out on that video. That's what I was talking about. Plus, I also wanted to defend the person that was defending me that that person got so snarky with and said smooches back to. I thought that that was rude to that person. And that was actually the person that said to me, Peter, I feel like when you focus on the negativity, you're taking away from what we like in the vlog. And I want to say thank you to you. I was defending you in there because that person came back to you and you can go back and look at it and they said smooches to you. They were nasty and they were rude. I actually think I blocked that person from my channel. But that's just what I'll do from now on. You know? And no, it's not one negative comment. As you can see, as I just proved to you, I go in and I look. I go in and I, I said it's real, I said this the other day. It's real hard to get blocked on my channels. You know, somebody out there has been leaving me consistently negative comments for years. And I just can't block them because I'm like, I feel like it's in the tone of what they say, right? So I don't want to do that. But I don't want to focus on the negative either. And the only reason I'm addressing this today is that I want to say I've heard you loud and clear. Okay? I've heard you loud and clear. So going forward... I will no longer focus on it. I do want to say this one thing. Years ago, I would, just to put this in, in reference, right? Years ago, I would, I mean, like, long before the accident, when I was still driving and whatever, I would start talking about really negative comments that I was getting. Or I would talk about, you know, like, my um, personal life, like, the intrusivity of my personal life and people and all that kind of stuff, right? And I would, like, film, like, a half an hour of a vlog talking about that and then like I would stop and I'd be like no I'm not gonna do this because I know people don't want to hear it all right me not talking about it for years pushed me to the point of last year of going through what I went through last year where I was like I finally have to talk about this because I would literally film tw I mean I I felt safe on the vlog so I always brought it to the vlog and I would say you know I can remember filming videos where I'd say you know, like, oh, like, I go show up to the, the vet, and somebody be like, oh, we just got a call from your, you know, your sister today, and she, I'm like, I don't have a sister, and they'd be like, you don't have a sister, and I'd be like, no, you know, I mean, I shared whole stories about that, okay, about, like, hate that I was getting, and, you know, like, DMs from people, threats that I was getting, I, and I would film it, and then I'd be like, I don't think the people that watch my vlog want to hear that, they want to hear happiness, and whatever, and so, I would come on my vlog and I would delete that and I'd just start all over and I'd be like, hey, you guys, like, what are you doing? Like, hello, 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 you know? And inside, I was suffering so deeply because I wasn't talking about it, right? 
And so I didn't talk about it for years and years and years. That was what instigated my standing up for myself era. And that was hard, you guys. That was really hard. And so I think a lot of people were surprised when last year all of a sudden I started sharing this stuff. It wasn't something that just started last year. It's something that's been going on for a very long time. And I've never really talked about it publicly until recently. Because from whatever, you know, because I just didn't think people really wanted to hear that. But I'm past the point of hiding parts of my life because that's not enjoyable for people to hear, you know? And that's really the only piece of my life that I've ever hidden. I've always talked about marriage problems and us being in marriage counseling and how our marriage is great today. I've always talked about grieving and the struggles that I've gone through, you know, online and offline. I've talked about my recovery. I've talked about all the tough things in my life. You know, I've talked about the accident. I've talked about the pancreatitis. I've talked about this. I've talked about the struggles I've gone through. This is the one thing I've never talked about. And as soon as I start talking about it, you know, People don't talk, people don't say to me, don't talk about the struggles you're going through with the accident. Don't talk about that. People don't say to me, um, don't talk about your mother and grieving your mother. Well, actually, some people do. But look at who says those things, right? People don't say to me, like, don't talk about the pain that you had from the medical pancreatitis that you had. People don't say that to me, right? But whenever I talk about the negativity that I'm getting... All of a sudden, people have issues with it. That's always interesting to me, the people that have issues with me talking about the negativity. Not the comment that I'm talking about where they said to me, it takes away from what we get, right? Because that was a very nice comment, right? And you've left me up and down. You've left me like 80 comments on this channel. Not just two, like the person that responded to it trying to coerce the conversation a certain way. I'm not stupid. I see how it goes, right? But I will ask this one question. Why is it as somebody that makes videos on YouTube, am I allowed to talk about everything in my life except for when it talks to, comes to talking about the negativity that I receive by just living my life online? Why is that off topic? Why am I not allowed to talk about it? Because I come out in a video and say that I'm done with it because I don't want to deal with it anymore because I'm doing my best to just ignore it. I am doing my best. It's a struggle. I even said in that video that I hope that I don't fall into it three or four days from now. I hope I don't. I'm doing better now than I was when I put that video out. But I'm still struggling with it. But apparently I can't talk about negativity or hate that I'm getting in my in, on, online. Why? Am I pushing some buttons? Or do the people like that? And that's what other people say. They'll say they love when you're talking about them. I know that. Trust me. And they fall right into my trap. And I'm not stupid because as soon as I talk about it, it all flares up. And then I can see who's talking about it, right? And then I know who to block. I'm not stupid. So just so you know that if I talk about it in the video or if I say something about it, it's to some degree. The, last week when I came out and said that I was done with it, that was not. That was me just throwing it all out and saying this is where I'm at. But I'm, I am done with it. But I'm a work in progress. It's not like I'm going to be there tomorrow, you know? It's not like I'm, like, the the person that only sings out my accomplishments and not my failures, you know? I learn more. I, I put this thing up. Um, hold on. I think I put it on my Instagram last night because I loved this. Somebody said, hold on, where was it? Eh, let me get to it. Um, I mean, like, I'm putting up all these things trying to, like, learn, y'all. Like, inner peace begins the moment you choose not to allow another person to, a, uh, or event to control your emotions. I'm still not good. That's why I put it, remember? I put on here, um, romanticize your life. T these are memes. I mean, quotes. <laughs> romanticize your life. Take pretty pictures. Feel like the main character. Light up a candle. Read books. Go for a walk. Dance to your favorite music. Buy yourself presents. Do whatever. Be happy. This is your life. Don't let anyone take it from you. And this is the one I wanted to talk about. It said, I came across a quote that said, if you went back and fixed all the mistakes, um, if you went back and fixed all the mistakes you ever made, you would erase yourself. And that's all I've ever needed to hear. And I agree with that, you know? Um, I'm not a perfect example of a perfect person by any means, and I don't ever claim to be. But I will make you a deal, okay, for those people that feel like genuinely that me talking about the negativity is taking away um, from what I'm talking about in the vlog. To help me and to help you, I will do my best not to talk about it, and I'll just block the people that consistently ne leave negative comments. Because not just a negative comment here and there. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about consistently, okay? Or that it's been brought to my attention that there are other places having a free-for-all with the name Peter Mon. Because what it says to me is that they obviously don't like me. They think I'm a joke, and that's okay. 
but I don't need to read it because the comments are what lead me to feeling negative and so I'll just block it. That's just what we'll do going forward and then I won't address the negativity anymore. Aces? Okay. So, anyway, um, I just want to put that in here at the end of the vlog so that we were clear on that and everybody got, you know, what was going on. And that's the only reason why I addressed it in this vlog, okay? Going forward, fingers crossed, I will do my best, okay? It's going to be good for me too because I don't want to talk about it, you know? Anyway, I hope that you guys are having a magically amazing um, Saturday. Oh my God! 544 in like 15 minutes. I've got to start getting ready. I hope that you guys are having a magically amazing Saturday. Um, don't let anybody turn your smile upside down. That's not the saying, is it? Turn your frown upside down. If you turn your frown upside down, it makes it a smile. Let everybody turn your frown upside down. Don't let anybody take your sparkle from you. Be the diva that you want to be always. <laughs> Happy Saturday. I love you guys so much. I might take tomorrow off, but I'm not sure yet. Okay, I'll let you guys know tomorrow. I love you so much. Bye.